open up walls and deny hard breaching gadgets or rather anti hard breaching gadgets. It can really force you to funnel in through individual doorways, which is not where you want to be at all. Especially on Theme Park, which has the most predictable doorways that you could funnel into. I, I mean, hard breaching truly is a staple on Theme Park. It is one of the biggest um, objectives that you want to succeed in during the round. So yeah, you're totally right. Having those hard breach denial operators off of the board are going to be huge, but in the same vein, having the hard breach operators off of the board too could be very detrimental to the attacking strategy. And there you go. Maverick is going to be banned by, interestingly enough, Okara, who you would normally expect to say, hey, we kind of need him, especially in our attacking round, so I guess we're going to have to see what they have in mind for being able to get around their hard breach deficit. Maybe an ace, maybe a Kali, as we've seen Burnt Turkey play. We don't necessarily know what hand we're going to be thrown by them, but Mira, she's also going to be banned out. Again, very logical pick, right? That's your Mira is what we normally see from T3, you know, comp, even ranked being played out. So nothing too crazy there, and Wamai will be our last pick. Once again, I mean, very obvious uh, bands. Normally, the defensive bands are going to be pretty defaulty, whereas the second attacker ban is normally going to differ for each map, where, you know, it could be a target ban. We've seen from this matchup, it could be a map-sided ban. It could even be a hard breacher, which is what we're seeing right now. So, I guess good on um, Akara to foresee that uh, hard breacher. I can already tell you, with the Thatcher, Maverick, and with my bands, this is really going to have to be an uphill battle. It's yep. just, <laughs> it, it's it's not going to be fun, really, for either side. On the defense, Wichita have got a great start, and I think that really comes at a deficit to Akara, because Wichita... At least I think there is some leverage. There's no Wamai. So Defenders projectiles could be more impactful just that. immediately from face value. But no Thatcher, no Maverick. Getting open walls is going to be hell on earth for Akara. And they're going to be forced to bring the Kali. Because that's your only other way that you're going to get anything off of these walls, period. Theme Park is the one map where I would say it is honestly passable for the defense to go up 5-1 to one at the half, just because it's so linear. The defense, they get to play into the expectations, and they get to sit, 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 and wait for the attackers to approach and appear. And it's really like no other map. That's probably the biggest thing why teams don't like to, to play it at all, because after the series... The team with the better round differential gets to pick where they kick it off, and it just kind of sets you up for failure almost if you begin on the attack. Because you have to, you know, keep yourself away from the inevitable hell of leaving the first half at a 1-5 to five or at a 0-6 to six even. And that can be too much for some teams which are, you know, more amateurish or, you know, rely more on the momentum. How can it feel to play a map like that to lose five rounds on the opening half? It's no fun for anyone. Right, and I think that's why teams need to go into this with a calm mind, understanding that, yeah, we're probably not going to win out, you know, our first side. And kind of take that with a grain of salt. And, you know, understand that, yeah, we're going to be handicapped. Truly, we, we are going to be handicapped. But they also have to come to the realization that maybe, just maybe, they will indeed be able to pull it back on their defense rounds, especially, you know, with Akara having a pretty decent, you know, performance, if not actually amazing performance on Oregon. So they can definitely do this. I have full faith in them. Maybe I'm just rooting for the underdog, but I really, I really do want to see them win some of these attacking rounds. That's kind of the problem. You 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 have to understand you're probably not going to win a whole lot of your attacks, but you still have to try because right. a lot of momentum can carry forward from the first split already. We'll see that defensive-sided nature come to view as Anarchy gets the opening frag onto the sledge. You lose your frag grenades, you lose your sledgehammer, so taking out the castle barricades is now made a little bit more difficult. And... On this extension strategy, you kind of have to move a little bit quicker than this. We're at a minute and five. 
Akara don't really touch the fringes of the objective with the coverage and the control of the map that they have currently, right? We're still seeing X stars move up down the dragon hallway, and there's still only a little bit of pressure up top, and that's now made difficult as you don't have your sledge to open up above the site. With these two opening frags, just telling by the way that the game is, the round has begun so far, I honestly feel like it's already pretty well won for Wichita, unless someone from Akara goes huge. And it might be EXO to do that, really. I mean, you got an opening frag for Akara that's on skins, the man sitting in barrels, which gives you that extra bit of map control that you potentially need to catalyze and execute into the objective, right? So you could definitely use that to your advantage. Now, I mean, looking at the rest of this round, oh no, you got a team kill and a kill for Wubs as well. A double and a triple. Oh my God, a quad if you want to include his teammate leaving faded all on his own in a 2v1 situation while Wubs is going to have to find a plant, but he doesn't even need to. Exo gets the shot on faded. I said it, you were going to have to have somebody go huge, Ooh. and it was Wubs, the Thatcher, to step into that role, or rather the Thermite even, just gunning him down. Who would expect? It's the 5.56, the gun that wins them almost single-handedly the round and drives it home. And that's oh, kind no. of the biggest deficit. When you face off on the lab storage bomb site, there's nowhere that you can really sit comfortably and wait as a defender and so the round is almost always won by whether or not the defense slows things down enough and forces a coordinated team to spend far too much time on the roam denial, or you have to wait for somebody to go huge to make an individual play to secure the round. And that was Wubbs on Akara who made it happen. Wichita, I think, recognized the somewhat fluke nature of that victory for uh, Akara, and so they're going to immediately retry it and go back here again. It's all about those two facets. Somebody going nuclear or the attackers being slowed down way too much. We almost had both really happen in that previous round, though Akara with the kill onto the player who was hiding inside of barrels, I think it's really what made that win possible because you relegate the rest of the defense to that singular site hole. Five seconds to go. Great. I mean, you basically force them to obey your pincer strategy. That That's the truth of it, right? Having barrel control allows you an extra mode of entry into the objective, simply put. But... Looking at this uh, this next round as Akara, you know, jumps off of their first round in a round win at that, I believe we'll be going to the same place if I am correct. Right? Lab storage? Yeah, yeah we're going to that lab clear. storage. Definitely. Okay. So that's oh, definitely no. good for them, right? Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no is right. <laughs> you got a Nitro Silk packing off quite a lot of health for both Shrady and Exo, just about 60 left for both of them, which is around 80 health lost by both. Of course, does not equate to an actual kill, but it is still pretty noteworthy to understand in a 4v5 oh. already as the definite, yeah, yeah, un really unfortunate as the Rome clear gets underway, Anarchy going down. But I mean, to be fair, he did have the um. So uh, we'll give him that, yeah, right? Yeah, he didn't play that <laughs> totally right. I think he wanted to kind of hide in the corner and hope that Akara didn't drone him uh, or swing out and go wide. He kind of tried to go for a middling, a middle option that just ended up with him getting killed simply because the reaction was there and on time. The same thing really happened with that Nitro. It was way in the middle, and so only a little bit of damage dealt to the two attackers who were out on that cash balcony. But losing Anarchy early on this site has got to hurt. Akara can push forward knowing that once they eventually do meet the outside of this bomb site, they have an early man advantage which allows them to kind of spread more thinly, knowing that there's only four defenders left. And also important to talk about is Shrady still being alive. Exuum is another great opportunity as Tyrant crosses at the exact wrong moment. It's a 5v3 for Akara who pushed forward hugely. And if they can leverage the vertical control and can dodge the preset nitro we see from skins, inside of storage this is almost definitely going to be a raucous victory for the wichita wolves or rather for their opponent burnt turkey piling up 
Woo! Oh my, a 5v2 already as Devil goes down to an unfortunate kill, almost, by the attack faded of himself, prevents the flawless kill. He gets a double, but gets shut down all in the same moment with Burnt Turkey on the double kill. Now, what's so unfortunate as you, you are calling out that Legion kill, right? But the one thing you didn't notice, I guess, or I failed to see was the fact that the Legion trap wasn't hit. And that's why Legion got <laughs> killed. The Legion trap actually was sitting on the stairs. You could tell it wasn't hit because when, um, and I, I'm not quite sure who got the kill, if it was like Burn, if it was Exo, I think it was Exo who got the kill, but he moved back up the stairs a little bit and then got hit by the Legion trap. So you could tell the way that he went down the stairs, the way that the Legion trap was placed, enabled Exo to not have to hit it. And therefore, the lesion wasn't alerted, and kind of like the the trickle down, you know, the effect, mm -hmm. uh, the butterfly effect that since the lesion wasn't alerted, he thought he was good to rotate. To Obviously, and wasn't, it. and it allowed Akara to get that kill. Therefore, you know, starting, catalyzing, continuing, whatever you want to call it, they're execute to the objective for a successful round. It's kind of one of those moments where you're just like, how did he not hit? Just like. Uh Right. It's not my fault that I died running through Arcade. It's the game's fault that he didn't set off the goo mine, and that's something big to notice. We're headed to a default site. Yep. Wichita, they thought they could win Drug Lab by going there again. Not so much. Akara come off with a much more sharpened victory, and because of that, are now just going to force on through, and they're up by two, which exceeds the amount of rounds that I was expecting the attack to come off of with. And if Akara can win more, maybe there is a danger lying ahead for Wichita, because this is defense, Wichita are a coordinated team, and my hope would be, and my really my opinion is that Wichita play really coordinated and that would lean well because this is such a normalized map but Akara are given the right opportunities and they're making the necessary decisions in the proper amount of time which has propelled them to great successes the capitalization has been there and they've got all the momentum in their favor now as we go upstairs to office and initiation beautiful word play stick I gotta commend you on that yeah, I, I I love that casting. That that was a pleasure to watch. <laughs> to watch? <laughs> yeah, to Are watch. You, yeah, yeah watch. watching the okay. game. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 a it's a sensory thing, man. You know, I I'm watching okay. you. I'm I'm watching you talk. I'm listening to you talk. You know, I'm I don't even have to focus on the game at this point. I just listen to you. You're, you're, okay. you're just you're just everything, you know. Talk about listening. <laughs> the player inside office listens and hears the sound cue and keeping under the bottom the opening at the center of the castle barricade. He does a tiny amount of damage to Exum, but the real impact, the real damage is Shrady gunning down Skins, the maestro, the impact player of Oregon, who is now 0 and 3. The last player that you want to die early aside is maybe the smoke is the maestro who can use that all to, when the time runs low to completely spray through at every opening we already know that this is kind of a default map where you're going to have those openings be very important through the wall. Exum will find Devil. Another man disadvantage, very important here from the Akara point of view. This gives them a ton of free territory that they can push forward into the objective with Anarchy tries to go for the 1v1 gunfight and Burnt Turkey very nearly gets the better of him. Closing in still at the control room door. They're waiting for a peek and the position is relay faded over by the yellow corridor. Repeeking again. He spots the thermite but terrible timing. A missed opportunity. No refrag yet. Charging through the mid side. It's Wubs who now will probably attempt the plant. He's worried about whichever angle is being utilized as Hexwim gets Tyrant. It's all over for Wichita barring a huge clutch up from Faded, who's far off of the objective with no likelihood to deny the plant. He will get Exum and rotating around. He might just be able to deny this if he hears the sound cue, but no, he won't be able to and only gets a double kill for his efforts as he's gunned down a long angle from inside a bunks. Akara with three in a row. A sad attempt at a defense for Wichita. I really expected more from them. That's that's the truth. Um, I'm not going to go off on them because I think they have had a pretty decent performance this game, but a 3-0 really speaks volumes on a generally defense-sided map.
especially you know theme park of all things they decided they wanted to do defense so i guess my question is what were they expecting when they chose theme park what 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 were they expecting to be able to pull out because they tried lab storage two times they lost it both and then they tried office which is you know a pretty popular primary slash secondary site whichever you want to call it and they won that they lost that horribly as well so i i guess is it more of the fault of wichita i mean or is it more of the fault of akara that has just been having a stellar performance Attackers you really have to question it there's only truly a point though because we just called wolves i mean they're a pretty amazing team in their own right so you have to imagine that there is something going wrong with them if they are losing these rounds back to back to back in just a a saddening succession but i i mean i it is sad to see but it's great to see that akara is prevailing truly i mean they were the underdogs in this competition you have to admit that i truly expected akara to win this and so for them not to be doing so uh, or if for them uh for wichita <laughs> I'm getting tongue tied. You know what? You know what, Stick? I'm getting tongue tied. I'm I'm going crazy here. Attackers are moving out to locate a bomb and defuse it. I think one point to mention in the expectations that we might have glossed over, and perhaps this is too early to say with the singular sample size of this map, but being that this is the first time I've seen theme park in a really long time since the beginning of the new meta. As teams get more adjusted to it, I wonder if this is sort of a villa situation where because really? of the changes to Jaeger and Wamai, it's now become much more likely that the attackers can be successful. And I wouldn't go so far as to say the impact of that is that it's more attacker sighted. And I think there is still an issue to address that maybe this is the fallout of Wichita not being at their top level of performance. But I think there is a little bit of substance to the fact that because Jaeger can't capture so many devices, so many projectiles, and also tagging onto that, the fact that Wamai is banned, I think that could be some, some effect. You know, if you look at kind of the streak of rounds that we're seeing so far, that might be something to look at in the future. And especially if through the rest of this match, we see it be attacker sided across both splits. Interesting point that you bring up there. I, honestly, like I didn't even think about that myself. Uh, I, I totally agree with you on that front though, that Jaeger, you know, having to capture so much utility, it, he's obviously not gonna get it all. It's Pokemon, man. You, you can't you can't catch them all. You can't yeah. catch them all. And yeah, with Wamai being banned, with Wichita Wolves, you know, it's just a whole collaboration of effects that are really, yeah, you're right, are leading to Wichita Wolves' demise on a 3-0 upset for them, you know? So, as unfortunate as it is, you know, it's other things, too. But looking at the rest of this round, you got a 3-4 player, uh, player scoreline here, right? You got Faded and Skins out of the round as Exo finds another kill for Devil, leaving Anarchy and Tyrant up on their own. But as I say, this caster curse, Anarchy is going to go down, leaving only tyrant hopefully the man with a plan but he only has 25 pounds as he grabs himself a double kill not too much of a chance here at winning this out as he does not burnt turkey picks up the kill finishes the round. that's what you want to see four in a row is really not where you want to be if you're standing in wichita wolves' shoes i was hoping that after what I described as a fluke win on round one and two confident victories returning to lab and then going to office that maybe showing up at bunks was the opportunity to make a change and could have led into Wichita finding their way back in this. And depending on the way that these next two rounds go, if Wichita can win these two, I think the question then becomes... Do they play in the same style, and do they see the same benefit of the, um, I don't know what we would call that, kind of the, um, Defenders, protect your bomb maybe the theory of a now more attacker-favored theme park, I guess is the way to talk about that. Because, you know, you have to sort of sit back and realize that it's not only the effect of the changes made to Wamai losing a magnet and Jaeger 
having only the opportunity to catch three projectiles on a recurring basis compared to the, what, sticks that he could get previously? All at once, you can't lie, you can't sort of lean on that as much as you would have previously, and you can't construct these huge setups where you've got infinite layers of protection from a massive amount of utility. You have to play either way more frag heavy, peak everything, take every fight, or you have to sit further back in the objective and try to... I just, you just kind of have to wait and see. So far, Wichita have waited and seen four rounds. It almost was a success in the first one. And these last three rounds have been nothing but destitute, disappointing attempts that have fallen safely in the hands of Akara. Safely in the hands of Akara, but out of the grasp of Wichita Wolves. That's really the point to note here as they ascend to round five. Only one round uh, before the last round for World Swap, because I kind of worded that weirdly. So basically two rounds from the actual World Swap itself. So once a car gets on their defense, we'll actually be able to see how they fare and you know how well they're going to play out the rest of this game. So, you know, your theory might hold up that it is more of an attack-sided map, being that, you know, Yeager is technically the only operator that can prevent that utility consumption or yeah that, that utility from either a carl or a wichita so there, i mean there you have it right sort of a slower round no opening kill found by either team so far and i think that's probably a, a result of the goyo shields and the castle barricade slowing things down and the clash compared, and the clash kind of just getting up in your face and saying no you can't take control of this you do have the cali which presents kind of an opportunity to kill clash should they get the um the stun or i don't know how you would the kind of counter the shield bash off Closing in through the rotate, almost a miss from Exuum, but he does correct the aim enough to get a kill on the Tyrant as the Clash takes a huge amount of damage. He's sent to 50 HP, still plenty of utility from Exuum as well, which could present quite the danger if he gets a clear sight line on to Devil. Closing in, there's plenty of shots, but they still don't manage to get the Clash or take control of anywhere over here towards the east. Meeting room, office, and... The initiation room are still in the hands of the defense, and they are not going to probably change anytime soon. Anarchy finds Burnt Turkey, a lucky crossfire there between the two attackers, but Anarchy gets two, and Devil cleans it up as the Clash. Wichita finally get a round victory. Perhaps this is a turning point after all. A mighty load of utility consumption from I, uh, Akara, really. I, they used up a lot of utility in an attempt to take out the clash that was entirely uninformed really if you think about it because they didn't really drone out the um the rooms you know next to uh, adjacent to where the clash was sitting and it costed them because you know as akara started to push out and tried to get a uh, an angle on where the clash was they started to get picked off one by one and I think, honestly, their attention was focused way too much on the Clash, which, right, that is what she's supposed to do, soak up the attention. But you also have to factor in, you know, maybe a split push defenders could work in, you know, stopping right out to the adjacent defenders from the Clash, and then you individualize her, you pick her off by herself. That's really the easiest way to get her, because in reality, she isn't too much of a threat from afar and or you know, on her own. So I guess you really have to think about that. You know, it could have been a tunnel vision situation for Akara realizing, hey, you know, we are focusing on only one person and there are two other people that we have to focus on who are holding very advantageous cross angles on us. So I guess really good on Wichita Wolves, you know, to pick out that situation, understand that they could capitalize off of this, use that to their advantage and play great off of positioning. But again, it also goes down to Akara for soaking up, you know, too much of their attention into one player, that being the Clash, and honestly not knowing how to deal with her. Three lab rounds, two bunk rounds, and a single office round. Armory Throne has yet to have been played once throughout right? this match 
and I'm honestly confused as to why. Because <laughs> Thermite and Maverick are both banned. And, or rather, Thatcher and Maverick are both banned. And so getting open walls, I talked to you about it earlier, it's not easy as an attacker, and it's going to be just a world of hurt if you try to go for that. And Wichita have interacted with Armory and Throne those three times because we see them play this extension at each opportunity. And so they have to know that this is an obstacle in their path. And I just, I, it's got to be personal preference or just decision making that they don't want to go to Armory and Throne. The vertical play is not the hugest thing. And, it, you know, even if it does become a problem, you can just situate a roam. And I think maybe if they had opted to make that change earlier or had approached this game from the start playing Armory and Throne, they might be at a better position than a three round deficit looking to potentially move it up to only a two round separation. Well, Honestly, Stick, I think they know that Armory Throne is an extremely attack-sided objective in its own right. I mean, it's open. It's super open. That affords a lot of space for the attackers to work with. Not only that, you're right, they have another factor they have to worry about, which is vertical play. And then on top of that, they have to deal with hard breaching. So there's just, I mean, a multitude of things you have to focus on when you go for Armory Throne. And maybe they just weren't prepared for having to, you know, work together, kind of, you know, use your chemistry to your advantage and say, you know, we need to focus on this and this and this at this exact point and have that coordination to work towards that objective. And you're totally right. It also could be personal preference. However, looking at this round, it is once again a very slow round, a slow moving round, a very vertically centered round, if you will. I mean, the attack is definitely trying to force the defenders to play a lot more uncomfortably and in their hand as you got barrels access opened up for the attackers with EXO starting off our kill feed on two skins the man who is not in form this game who was on the cafe map and I believe on Oregon as well but faded all the way on a double kill as X-Stars tries to respond in the best way that he could but he does get down all in the same moment EXO as well goes down and that is a win for the defenders Wichita escaped the danger of only being one round away from match point and now have the difficult task laid out ahead of them of what to do on the offense. Are they going to play that coordinated style that they are so well known for? Or are we going to see them kind of lean into the unpredictability a little bit? Try to come up with something that Akara are not prepared for. Try to pull off something that shocks the odds and sends a chill down the spine of Akara. What is going to be the game plan with the Capital, with the Ace? I feel like it's probably going to be something pretty stock standard. We will see Lab attempted again, this time from the Okara point of view. And I wonder if we're going to see kind of a, a same similar strategy that came up earlier Attackers in the game. Are we going to see that extension strategy where the sole focus is making sure that Wichita have to spend as much time as possible taking control of the map Without the castle in play, I have to say this probably looks like a little bit more of a close to home option. I'm a little bit surprised that Bandit is being used out of all things rather than somebody like a castle that could actually benefit the team utility wise. I'm gonna guess that Bandit is picked more for his MP7 than anything else because if you think about it, Lab storage doesn't really have a whole lot of hard breachable walls, and I don't even think those walls are really being reinforced as is. Yeah. So, right, and plus those walls could even be, you know, the utility if Bandit chooses to put his traps up on those walls could be easily thwarted by the attack. Yeah, I'm he so puts it on one wall, the puny wall, <laughs> but it could be thwarted like... by the attack playing vertical. I feel like it's probably just he wants to set that there like just in case. It, just it's in not, case. you know, central focus to have that wall up. The only impact of that wall is the angle that you can get. And I want to say that he's bringing the bandit so that he can trick the maintenance to throne wall. I feel like that's the only okay. place to have the bandit batteries that okay. makes any sense. Because okay. you've got the bandit or rather mute jammer here with the batteries to back it up. 
Trady finds the opener onto skin, so already a good start for Akara. Wichita don't even look to take control of maintenance. The bottom floor so far is maintenance, gong, tellers is concerned. That's not their focus right now. They're just trying to get control of the vertical play, and then after that's done, maybe move downstairs. But they're not going to be able to take this for free or really any ease. A bad timing there for Shrady. He's focused on the wall, and that opens himself up from a very simple double door swing. And we can see that the setup so far is what they've got here is pretty great. You've got a shield here, a perfect position with a alibi prisma behind it. So if Wichita try to contest this angle, not only are they taking a 50-50 chance whether or not it's actually Exuum that's behind that shield, but also it creates a problem because as soon as you shoot that, you can't push through. You have to go backwards and you have to waste time. Exuum is actually rotated. He will down fade it. And so now you're up by a huge margin. And if they can get this confirm, if they can use the explosive through the floor, they might be able to get one or two. Wubs is not really in the proper position, and he's actually already out of his nitro, so not really anything that you can do about that. With Exum on low HP, he kind of almost matches Faded, but still, from a defender point of view, I think Akara probably got this pretty handedly in the bag. Indeed, unless, like you, or like we actually have previously seen, Wichita Wolf can come up big with an individual play. If they can in that situation, we might actually be seeing a very big change of how the tables are going to work. And oh my god, he's just, he's just chilling. He's just chilling on the hatch. What? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Well, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Observer, for pointing that out, but in the last few seconds of the round, it doesn't seem like too much is going to happen for Wichita Wolves as the plant denial, even the, the objective denial, is going to come out for Akara. Yeah, it's, it's going to result in a round win for them, right? It's a very hasty execution and a very uninformed one, so with heavy hearts, we say that this is a round loss and a peak potential game loss for Wichita Wolves if their performance keeps up like this. We are very much nearing the point of no return where it is going to be a very steep hill for Wichita Wolves to have to come back up and we might actually be seeing Akara winning this out given that they hit match point for this next round in a 6-2 lead. If after the first half Wichita were at a distance from match point, we do take one step closer with the victory on the quaternary or tertiary or primary, secondary, whatever you consider lab to be. They now are on what I sometimes call match point eve. It's only one victory away from Akara. That's smart. And it, it might happen. Honestly, I think there's a very real possibility Wichita are being denied and there's just... I feel like there's not anything that you can really do. You can't move into your own. I mean, you can't really play in a similar play style. Akara are denying that pretty well. And you only have so many rounds to potentially settle in, I guess, on your attacks. You have to pivot quickly, which honestly is not Wichita's biggest strength. They're a team that kind of set up. They do one thing, and that's how they want to keep this. Going from round to round, that's when the changes come. And they have to start now. We will see the first armory thrown of the entire match. Finally, we will see it brought out. And if the difficulty with the hard breaching is a problem here, that could really be the death sentence of Wichita. And, or at least put us even nearer to that. Oh, one advantage they have going for them is the vertical play, because it doesn't seem like there's too much of a presence, if at all, from Akara on top floor. Essentially stopping out the sledge play, the ash play, the Zofia play, whatever you want to call it, from above. So if Wichita Wolves were to play that, capitalize off of vertical play, they could very easily win out this round and get a very nifty post-plant execution for themselves. Now. That really is only going to be shown in due time as Mozzie is going to be our first line of defense alongside Exo on the Malusi. Now, they're playing on the other side of the top floor, which means that, yeah, they will be playing a proxy defense, but they still, I mean, are going to be playing a defense. 
So it definitely is good that, you know, they are there in the first place, but they're definitely going to have to play more of an active role if they want to prevent the vertical play from coming into full swing. Patience here for Maxwell as he looks over towards the rotate moving through. Oh no, a missed opportunity, and now they know full well that the Malusi is near. Shots around the box. It's a difficult angle to make. Exum, wrong decision. Not time to pull out the Nitro as Tyron is ready with his gun up to take that fight. Tara now with the man disadvantage are forced to retreat, but from above, another Nitro is sent, but the Kali, lucky, she dodges to another room, and Anarchy will take safe residence. A 5v3, this is something good for Wichita, and they're looking to defeat the first armory throne that we've seen almost the entire match. Faded up above will now open up the vertical angles, and Akara have got to go big here. Without a Nitro, you're going to have a hell of a time denying Faded as he continues to open up every single possible angle for Armory. Devil might not have spotted Shrady, but now as he tries to contest over towards Dragon, they've got to eventually figure out what's happening. More of the objective will fall, and Akara positioned inside of barrels can only do so much to stop the armory push. Tyrant locks off the rotate from the double doors, and the player who was previously up on the hatch will likely do the same over towards the west. We're gonna have to make a move, and the plant is looking likely as skins will fell burnt turkey, the only player left solidly within the objective. Trady is still hiding in the corner. The plant is gonna happen. Stars will get a great pick onto skins, which could turn the tide here if they're able to deny it, but it's the crouch angle, which will secure faded that frag, and just Stars, whose position is known by everyone. Wichita Wolves with their third round win. There you have it, an attacker sided armory throne room. Who could have foreseen that? <laughs> oh my gosh, that that was a pretty good round for Wichita Wolves. I'll give it to them. They played very well. They played off of their advantage that they had, which is, as I predicted, vertical play. They forced the defense to get very very uncomfortable in their position in the objective they kind of pincered them around and they forced them really to play into where they wanted them to go which was to their deaths and on top of that you had a very successful roam clear you got off i believe two or three players from the bat who had been roaming so that's also good for them too right and then you finish off with a really strong execution and very well held crossfires which i mean genuinely sums up a beautiful round for wichita wolves however it seems like car is going to try their hand at armory and throne room again this time around i'm hoping that they're going to take more of an active presence in preventing wichita wolves from actually getting in to office and playing vertical rather than Wichita Wolves being able to come to them on the other side, being the west side of the top floor. Um, other than that, uh, you know, you can't really expect too much else from Akara. They tried their best, but again, it really is an attack-sided objective, I'm gonna have to say. It's open to a lot of deficits for any defense. The attacker spawned the fuser has been dropped. Attackers recover the defuser. At least Akara have yet to take match point. That's the one hope here for Wichita, that with this victory on Throne, they can go again and try to save things for their team. The defense is back to the first floor again. We'll get to see it time after time as the Throne and Armory setup is tried again. Burnt Turkey, a FMG 9 pick. It's not often that we see that weapon prevail over the M590, but he makes the decision that he needs the better tool for the long-range fight, and Burnt Turkey has a long and storied history of playing on the smoke. He's pretty good, I've heard, with the SMG-11, so that spells disaster if he takes a 1v1 against Wichita, and you might fall out and lose against the very fast-firing machine pistol. They've got an early notice. The Malusi's back in this hallway position where we've seen her play in the previous round, and she might try to stay there again. Exuum died in not a great way last time this happened, and it fell and gave us a really bad situation where it was man disadvantage and everyone pushing into the objective. That's not going to happen this round, as Exuum has actually rotated down to the stairs to take the different route to denying that connector rotate. 
And there you have it, Tyrant Falls giving Akara an already handy advantage in the round. A 4v5 situation is definitely going to prove to their hefty, hefty advantage. So, a vertical play is still going to be present, but it's not going to be as present with Tyrant being out of the game. He doesn't have those reach charges, and he most definitely doesn't have that Zofia blaster to their advantage, or her utility, whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, that's also Fragging Power out of the game, so kind of huge for Akari to be taking that impact frag out of the round. And again, you only have about one minute left in the round to sum up a good execute for Wichita, so they are really going to have to get their asses in gear if they want to get a plant going, or if they want to at least get on the objective, make it a death match, right? So Barrels right now, it's going to be contested by Skins, who's looking outside, trying to get as much intel as he can on X-Stars before making an informed move, but it is Devil himself to take out X through the wall. A good choice for not having to take your face-to-face -face engagement, and there you go, Exo and Shrady is gonna tack on for a 2v4 already with Burnt Turkey adding up 1 and oh my lord, and in a reverse sweep, you got Anarchy falling to the fast hand of Burnt. Finally a win. Wichita Wolves are served a response. Match point for Akara. Series point after a difficult battle, after an initial struggle on the first map and a wild Oregon. Theme Park looks to be coming up in their favor. Wild We're headed to lab again. <laughs> what? Yeah, no, that map really went off the rails and ended in spectacular fashion. Maybe that's what we'll see here. Or, potentially, Wichita can hit their stride again, and that wasn't their bloody end. Lab and storage is familiar territory. That's where we started off this half, and it could be the end of the road. It all comes down to Wichita, how they play, and what happens with regards to the fragging power. That's something else to mention. After Oregon, it honestly starts to feel like Skins has ran out of gas. He's 2-9. and nine. Anarchy and Faded are the two players who have stepped up in his absence. Through the nine rounds we've seen so far, nobody has eclipsed double digits on their team, whereas Exum has collected 11. And I don't think that's seeing the full picture, but it's definitely one very important part. Because of the vanilla nature of this map, you kind of have to be on your fragging game. Because that's all what it takes to disrupt things. You have to be ready to take those fights when it comes to blows. And skins not showing up is a worrying um, kind of sign, honestly. Just... He's not getting his frags, and so the rest of his team has to step up, and that's not totally the best thing to ask of them, because for a long time, Wichita has played this coordinated style, but have lacked a key and central player to fill that fragger position. They had Iski, and then they had, uh, previously before that, they had A21 Mayo, but Skins is dead on the entry again. He drops the hatch. Wildly just into the fray with no support from his teammates. That was the best move he could have made. I mean, if you... Oh, wow. Just, he's just... He's a gunner? He's just a gunner? He just knew it? I, I mean, he... I, I'm floored. I'm really... I'm really... <laughs> Floored. I'm floored at that. Oh my god. Yeah, you can tell. Just at this point, they're conceding. They they, they really are conceding this. It, it's a 3v5 already. And, and it's so unfortunate. Unless somebody can turn this around for Wichita Wolves, it is a lost game for them. And, and it's gonna put their mental down even worse. Losing against Kara, so unfortunate. And the losing streak, hopefully not. They, they might continue as we get put into our 3v3 situation. One of the player being picked up aside Wubs is going to be Shrady. So it leaves Burnt Turkey, X, and XO 
to defend our objective. Change of pace. Frags found between Anarchy and Faded. We move us into an equal position. That's yeah, anyone's round to take off. at this point. Burn Turkey is still up. They've got some knowledge of X Stars who sits deep within the throne room, hiding around the corner, not exposing himself. Anarchy creeps in at the dragon doorway. They want to get some intel to make that informed decision on how to execute onto this player, or maybe look to change and approach closer to the bomb site. It's Burnt Turkey who finds Devil, and now X-Stars wins the fight against the Kali. Just faded the sole hope of his team to keep them away from a victory here. Akara are standing on the brink. Faded will get the first one, looking over towards Split. It's Bandit who peeks out, and the duo from Exum Akara Gaming will take a 2-1 to -one victory, 7-3 on Theme Park. The victory is theirs. What? Yes, it is. Is in a stunning performance from Akara. They turn it around four. Indeed, you are right. A two-one. They came off of cafe with good spirits and a hope that they would win. And look what happened. They came off seven four, seven three. Absolutely amazing. So it was Wichita Wolves' only pick that won them their first match. But then it came out to be a car winning Oregon and Theme Park. And what shaped up to be such a great display. I mean, nobody would have expected this coming off of our first game. It just Wichita Wolves seemed on form. And yet, they got caught off guard all too many times. And they were not able to adapt to what Akara could give them. And it's so unfortunate, but they lost. They ended up losing it out in that 2-1, but it is great for Akara because they have finally dethroned the amazing Wichita Wolves for another great night of play. It's a difficult position to be in. There's it is. Just, I, I think with this, because of the way that the seeding works, there's no chance for the potential of a... A comeback to enter the winner's group. It's something that I talked about when I was with uh, Infernosis earlier on the first series. You just, you, you can't make it to the winner's group. The match that will decide the future of Group A will be between Matt Squared and Akara Gaming. And now Wichita Wolves, a troubling start, are going to have to stare down the loser's group and it's not where you want to be. The winner's group gives you a much better opportunity to proceed to playoffs, and you don't have, you know, that danger of being eliminated. I think we've got an interview, though, so we will have somebody to chat with from our victors. It will be Burnt Turkey himself, the Redux Rising graduate. Congratulations on your victory. Finally seeing success with your team. Wait, hello. hello. Sorry, I wasn't connected completely, so. Ah, uh, okay. After, you know, kind of an initial struggle against Ariel Arise, it's got to be good to finally take a victory against your opponents and, you know, be the decider of your own destiny. What was kind of the thought in the run-up to this game? Because obviously playing against Ariel Arise, it's pretty clear the... um kind of the story or the way that that match has gone, but once we actually got into that game, you got split it pretty close to the vest, and you were almost able to push through to a match point on both of the maps, just because of circumstance that obviously didn't pan out, but what were your preparations coming to face against Wichita Wolves, who are obviously a very well-known team inside of T3? Um, we did VOD review, obviously. Uh, we did see that they were not good on Theme Park, and then we're just com we just tried to get another comfortable pick off on us, which was Oregon. Cafe, we were decent at before, but I guess we just struggled today. It happens. So we just tried to make sure we went to a map that we knew we were good on. And then hopefully theme parks, we saw they struggled a lot with that as well. Mm -hmm. On Cafe specifically, the first half on your attacks, it wasn't, you know, the pinnacle of success. But on the second half, a few of those rounds look like you've perfectly read into Wichita Wolves. Was that the effect of the the preparation and the VOD review? Because it's something that happens so commonly 
Wichita Wolves play a pretty samey strategy on mining in a lot of their cafe games. And I've been telling people that you need to VOD review this, break down the strategy so that when Wichita pull it out, you're prepared for it. Was that what happened once you guys went there? Um, from what I remember, not really. Uh, it was kind of funny because I know a lot of those rounds, even Theme Park and Cafe, we didn't exactly know where site was. We knew it was like either second floor or top floor, something like that usually. But we wasn't exactly sure, so we went in there. We saw, it's like, okay, it's hopefully somewhere on the middle floor. Uh, we found it finally, and then we're like, okay, we need to take reading, took reading, and then we just kind of got picks throughout that, uh, thankfully. And then, I don't know. Moving over um, after Cafe, which was obviously a pretty fast match, Oregon, it looked like it kind of promised to be a little bit longer. Um, specifically, some of just the transition rounds i i wanted to talk about i wrote this down what the impact on you guys was from that nomad band because it looked like wichita played really well around it they were specifically having somebody roam in almost every single round to come up near the end and cause trouble um, whether that was a jaeger or a vigil kind of depended from round to round how did you guys try and address that because Nobody really likes to play Gridlock, to be honest, when you're on a fast-paced match. And in T3, Gridlock is slow. She's really slow, and her guns aren't totally the best unless you've got somebody that's really destined to be your Gridlock player. How did you guys kind of orient yourselves around that? Uh, yeah, we, we agreed with um, not not playing Gridlock because of the impact. Uh, you can just shoot it, whatever. We didn't like that because it can mask over other sounds. Uh, so we... The way they roamed was, it was like they just started off roaming. So we tried to like, like tried to roam clear from the beginning, and after that we kind of just whether we got a pick or not, we'd usually see how we played. Because I was playing Cali, I'm normally the flank watch. So then the idea was I would try and just make sure you know, uh, specifically I remember on meeting I would just kind of watch the back tower stairs usually. Uh, other than that, I would just hold long giggles with Kelly's sniper, whatever, DMR, we're going to call it. Um, but other than that, it was hopefully I would watch flank, and hopefully they didn't do it most of the time. Sometimes we would try and just uh, do things quickly because we didn't want anyone to flank. Otherwise, we'd just try to like have a net push around them and not allow them to roam around us, basically. So as we got into the second half of Oregon, you guys were able to really confidently string together rounds towards the end. Um, whether it was Dorm's basement or meeting, it was just confident win after confident win. What I wanted to talk about specifically in those streak of rounds has got to be the final one we saw. It's a tertiary defense. You're playing kitchen and meeting. And immediately, you know, you're not totally expected to win that because it's the worst site, probably, in my opinion. Um uh, it kind of determines between team to team. But what you guys did was kind of just played a nitro, tossed it up, denied the plant. And after that, it seemed like Wichita had no idea what to do. They had to recover the diffuser. The time was low. Was that chaos something that you guys intended to disrupt Wichita Wolves? Or was it something that you more kind of just utilized to your advantage? Um, We, I know... I think we asked, or Exum asked to bring Nitro impacts, and I think we said to bring Nitro. And then halfway through the round, uh, we, I think we got picked off. I think X, got, X Star just got picked off, and uh, we agreed that Exum needed to rotate down, so we rotated down. We knew we were trying to go for Nitro. We didn't expect them to completely f not fall apart, but kind of panic like they did, because we got the Nitro down. Uh, Shrady, our sub, thankfully, he played for us. Um, he then got the other person that was defusing, and Exum just kind of ran up and killed everyone, and then I got the scraps at the end, basically. So we we basically planned it out, I guess you could say. Um, we got a little lucky with them not looking behind them sometimes and not looking up the hatch, in my opinion, a little bit. But other than that, we planned it out completely. So moving on to theme park, it is kind of conventional wisdom that theme park is a fairly defender sided map uh, because of its linear nature that's something that we kind of chatted back and forth with during the actual map you guys just kicked it off with four attacker wins in a row i mean just explain that how did you make it happen uh we we struggled a lot before on theme park, so we tried to make sure we knew what lineup we wanted to take, we knew what ops we wanted to take, we tried to make sure people were comfortable with what they had on theme park. Uh, thankfully, they didn't ban Kelly or Nomad, that was nice, so that helped a lot. Um, we 
we also, again, didn't find site correctly. So then we tried to make sure we very much communicated with each other. We made sure we were talking to each other. We had split pushes. We, I think we nearly almost communicated properly, uh, like completely. Other than that, I think we just did a better job of communicating and understanding what was going to go down, what should have been cross-held and things like that. Into um, overall that match, how does it impact you guys to come into that game, you know, to have prepared, to have VOD reviewed everything and then have to use a sub? It's a little upsetting. Like, I understand, like, it's a set schedule and everything, uh, but we had one of our players, I think, go to a cabin and just kind of relax for a little bit, which is unfortunate because he planned that for a while. He can't really go around it. Um, so it's a little frustrating to play with a sub, but I'm not saying Trady's bad or anything. I enjoyed Trady very much. Very good player. Um, but it wasn't too bad because, you know, subs, sub, we should have a sub. Um, we should, you know, know how to play with them and everything. So I didn't mind it too much. I'm pretty sure our team was fine with having a sub. Uh, it was a little annoying on defense, though, to explain everything again because we, we weren't able to drive one with him too much. So I, don't know, I think it was a fun, fun time. All right, well, that's good to hear. Um, congratulations overall on your win. I'll go ahead and toss you over to Jenna for any more questions. Whew. Wow, Stick. I mean, you basically got everything. Are you, you, you really covered everything. Um, the only other thing I can truly imagine, and this is such a simple question, but it's more of like a psychological thing, and I normally touch on this when I'm doing interviews. Now, it was a 2-1. And the first point was made by Wichita Wolves, obviously on Cafe. So kind of coming off of Cafe, was it more of a realization that, you know, we have to keep it together and we have to, you know, change things up? Or was it like, you know, take it with a, you know, a grain of salt and say, okay, well, you know, this, was, this wasn't this was our map, but we could pull it back on Oregon and theme. Uh, we knew Wichita has been good on Cafe for the most part. Uh, we've also been trying extremely hard to work on not getting our mentals, you know, completely gone after the first map if we lose, because that has been a problem in the past. We've gotten frustrated with these, with ourselves before, um, so we tried a lot in the past to just have always keep good vibes. There's a couple times in those maps that we got a little frustrated with ourselves. We started yelling a little bit, but we got back. But also on Cafe, you know, Skins just, he fried me every single round. He's the cheating dude. I, I don't understand him. Um, but other than that, I think... Um, as a team, Wichita played better. We just, we couldn't find picks on Cafe. Other than that, we just kind of realized that. We said, oh, well, going to the next map, Oregon. It's our map. We picked it. We are good on it. We know that, basically. All right. Well, I think that's it for my, uh, my interrogation session. I don't know about you, Stick, but, uh, I think I'm good. Yeah, uh, not really any final questions, um... I guess one is kind of the fragging game because Skins on Theme Park, he was kind of down bad. And Wichita for a long time have had kind of an issue finding their form and lacking that one player to be the star fragger at the front of the fray. Was that a big contributor to maybe why they weren't so successful on the defense, do you think, was an issue with their performance as a team specifically or uh, kind of was just a result of the map? Um, just, I think they don't play well on theme park, but also, as you saw, you know, like, skins killed me every time, you know, I was, like, seven on one at one point, you know, I'm just saying, but, uh, uh, other than that, no, I think, I think they just, I think we communicated more, I think we just played a better theme park than them, I think they just need to work on communication, probably, because the roaming, roaming wasn't bad, but we can kind of understand what they're going to do with it and everything, which most teams usually do, but I think they were a little lost sometimes from what it seemed like and we also got a couple lucky shots in and whatnot with vertical play so what are your expectations against matt squared because that'll be the decider match that you face to determine whether or not you go to the winners group or uh, down to the losers group because matt squared very recently have just been on the streak of wins and they have been fairly confident in themselves do you fear the prophecy of the collegiate powerhouse so wait okay my question is we do play we play matt or we play ariel next for this mm, you play mm, actually we're in losers play ariel 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you would play Ariel because they came off with the win and then lost to Matt Square. Does that change at all? Because I mean, Ariel Arise is just Ariel Arise, and Matt Square yeah. is also kind of a really big uncertainty. Uh, I to be fair, I'd be more quaking against Matt Squared because I I flaunts indeed and Matt I Matt dude I don't I don't know about that man, they're just different breeds. Uh, Ariel, I I don't know if we'll win against Ariel, but I we we kind of know how they play. Um, we've seen at least a couple maps from now, so we have VOD we can look at. And the last two maps we had were seven four seven four, and on both of those maps we had like two people doing well, and the rest of us just weren't having a game. Like I remember, I did go on the first map, and I had like two kills, four kills on the second map. So I think it's possible to beat Ariel, especially with them having their mental kind of gone after Matt. And yeah, um, so I think it's possible. I think you know we have a chance at least. So I don't know. All right. Well, I really am excited to see whether your team will be able to face off against the dastardly Ariel Arise in that game. But that's about all from us. Congrats on your win, of course. I'll let you go ahead and celebrate with your team. Uh, thank you. And also, you know, thank you to everyone that, you know, has come and support us. Thank you to the org for, you know, still repping us and everything. So, yeah, I'll see you later. All right. Bye-bye.